the lullaby. There you are. <coughs> what? I'm here with Jonathan Harris, one of the great voices of Hollywood. God's truth, yes. Ooh, listen to that voice. Jonathan Harris, Lost in Space, one of great films. I mean, great movies. Yes. Tell me about it. Where are you from originally? And look at this wonderful face, believe me, when I say beautiful face. Jonathan's one of a kind, I mean, of Hollywood's one. When did you first discover yourself in films? How old were you? First film. Let me see. First film was 1953. Really? Went... Paramount Pictures, uh -huh. Botany Bay. I discovered Australia. Ah. I was a convict with Alan Ladd. Ooh. And together we discovered Australia. More's the pity. They tell me. Jonathan, working with Alan Ladd, Paramount's, one of Paramount's great stars. Yes, yes. And uh, working with this man, what did you learn from him? Learning, had you learned anything from... Uh, Not one thing. Not the one? No. What kind of guy was our Alan? Very nice. He was very nice and very short. Yes, yeah, is it true they used to put him on a box? You are asking the original. <laughs> I was dug into a trench every morning, <laughs> and Alan was propped up on apple boxes, and I looked up adoringly at him. <laughs> My neck was in a disaster state for 16 weeks but he was a very nice man uh -huh. he didn't seem to mind somehow uh -huh. about uh, being short well I, why should one mind anyway he was very nice to work Jonathan for. Harris uh, you started in theater yes. I presume with that yes. voice you had to start in theater yes. in the good days on Broadway on Broadway first very first Broadway show heart of a city 1942 and who was that Oh, God. Margot Graham. Do you remember Margot Graham? Graham. Margot Graham. Yes, yes, yes. Beverly Roberts. Okay. Dennis Hoey. Uh -huh. A cast of favorites. It was a marvelous play. And it was my first play, and I had ten lines in it, which I spoke loud and clear. <laughs> is, that, is that the secret? Speaking loud and clear? So when in helpful. doubt, loud and clear. <laughs> they never know. I have done musicals. I don't sing nor dance, but I've done both. Loud and clear. Uh -huh. yeah. Jonathan's from New York. Yes. Originally. Got into the business. Yes. You studied acting with who? No, studied acting by acting. That's the secret. Did you hear that? Studied acting by acting. I was too poor to go to a school. So you... Had no money. The best Shelley Winters always tells me, listen to the actor and you'll ra react. That's how naturally. I learned. I learned to watch my betters and my worsers. Ah. There was something to be learned in both areas, uh -huh. and to this day, I watch my betters. Who's some of but the not my worsers. Who is the favorite betters you love that you've learned from? Come on, wait. Sage or screen? Really? Sage or screen? I say stage first. And then we'll get I guess Paul Muni. Oh yes. He was superb. In screen. Screen. Can't think of anybody, really. Really? I've worked with a lot of very, very good actors. Uh -huh. Maybe Michael Rennie, with whom I did my first television series, and came to love him. He was a lovely man. Uh -huh. We were very good friends. Uh -huh. And I learned a, a lot about movie acting from him. Really? About standing still. Uh -huh. uh, because as a stage actor, one almost never stood still. One had to project to the second balcony because right. those people paid the money. Right. On the screen, you need not project. There's a microphone right. like that, yes, picking yes. it all up. And I learned a lot from watching Michael and working with him about doing the same emotional intensity but quieter, uh -huh. you see. How did Jonathan get this role, Lost Space? Oh, and yes. Just by an accident or...? No accident at all, my dear man. What do you say? <laughs> there are no accidents. Okay. How did it... 1965. I have total recall, I warn you. Yeah. I got a telephone call from my then agent, whose name escapes me at the moment, <laughs> and he said, Irwin Allen is doing a series called Lost in Space at right. 20th Century Fox, and he wants to see film on you. And I said, really? What is the part? Well, he said, I don't know, said this to 10%. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, well, you tell Mr. Allen that I will not show him possibly the wrong right. film, but I will show him the real thing, me. <laughs> and he said, he's not going to like that, and I said, tough. Of course, you know, that ain't what I said at all. And uh, he called back for 20 minutes and said, 
Irwin Allen wants to know who the hell you think you are, and he'll see you at four o'clock. Ah. And that's how I got this plum. It, it is a plum. Oh, it's a plum. This really got your name out there. I think the I've done 612 television films. But this did it. This is the plum. Yes, it's the plum. And I'm very grateful. What's the most joy that you have here in Hollywood? Could you share some joy that you... I have tremendous joy. I live in a lovely house uh -huh. with a lovely wife of many, many years. Uh -huh. And I have a marvelous son who attends to his parents and loves them dearly. Says he does. <laughs> it's because he wants all that money, you see. <laughs> and calls up four times a day, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which is lovely, yes. you see. And I adore going to work. I am the king of the voices. You read. Oh, you yes. are. You are the king of voices. Oh, yes. I'm now doing the animated Disney new feature film uh -huh. called It's a Bug's Life. Uh -huh. We're all bugs. Uh -huh. I am the praying mantis. <laughs> Referred to in the script as the magnificent Manny. Uh -huh. They've been reading my fan mail. <laughs> and Madeline Kahn is in it. And Phyllis Diller. Oh, and David Hyde Pierce. Wonderful. wonderful. They're wonderful to work for. And I have a new series for Columbia TriStar uh -huh. called Channel Umpty Three, in which I play the meanest son of a bitch in the world. <laughs> you in keep, the world! You keep yourself busy, Jonathan. Yes. Really. Oh, yes. Why, I adore why, the, you adore the business. You, I have great joy in my work. When it stops, I will stop. Jonathan, you're an absolutely delight to talk to. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Really a delight. Thank, Thank you. you so God much. God bless you. Nice seeing you. Here I am with Carol Lindley. So, Skippy, do you want a, an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> Carol Lindley, uh, the birthday party, you were there. Yes, it was a time. great birthday Couldn't party. Couldn't see you much. Couldn't see you. Well, there were so around. many people. You were really quite a, what say, a popular birthday right. boy. It was Carol a big Lindley, party. You came out to Hollywood at a very, very young age. Yes. Let's see. You have a young picture here, a real young picture. We can see uh, how beautiful you, you know, were. Yeah, yes, so well. No, that's it's a, not, no. No, we're talking no. young. Uh, I, I mean, sold young, so young. much. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, you do. Uh, I sold so much yesterday. You've been that working I'm here. I mean, it's really selling a lot of pictures I, here. I did. Uh, I'm at the well, Beverly Garland. And uh, they have this every year. Here you go. Uh, here is a very young Carol Lindley. Look how beautiful. Mm, this was film little, was. I was a little was pudgy. Film? Uh, Holiday for Lovers with right. Clifton Webb. Clifton Webb. Working with Clifton Webb. Yeah, it was great. Very yeah, he, and Jane Wyman. And Jane Wyman. Yeah, and Joe St. John. Oh, who's this? Gardner McKay. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Isn't that great? Carol Lindley. Yes. Carol Baker. Sorry, I can't stop Carol myself. Baker. Yes. Sorry. I love, I love your part you did. Carol, portraying Carol Baker. No, Harlow. No, Harlow. I mean, yeah. Harlow. I'm always confused with Carol Baker and Harlow. That's well, that's because she played because Harlow, she too. Harlow. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Uh, well, there were two versions of it. Right. Uh, I had started, uh, mine was Electronivision, which is an experiment that really right. didn't work. Right. And uh, we had a three week rehearsal period. And my mother was played during the rehearsals by Judy Garland. Right. And Judy came to me the day before we started shooting and said, Carol, this is a piece of. I'm leaving. And I said, no, Judy. And uh, Ginger Rogers took over for her. Right. A short notice, did a beautiful job. And um, so you saw Judy Garland at the last moment, didn't the, you? The last, within the last, the last year. year yeah. This is a, a George Morrell. That, that is beautiful. Isn't that, it beautiful? Yeah. yeah. I don't think of it as exactly me, but on the other hand, it's a beautiful when picture. When you see your films, mm. you, don't say, you said you don't see yourself as exactly you. Who is Carol Lynn? Well, I change daily, like most people. Yeah. Um, I, I, actors are kind of funny when they see themselves on film. Um, I think myself and, like most actors, uh, are quite critical. Right. And you see the one flaw. Uh, I don't really look at myself that closely because I always want to correct, correct right, it. Right. But I listen to myself, and I listen for something wrong, and then I, I die. So you are critical. Oh, yeah. I think most actors are. Yeah. Carol Lindley, very first few actors very first look at themselves and say, I love you, I love you. Is the theater or a film started, Carol? Uh, I started in the theater in New York on Broadway. Right. I've done about 10 Broadway plays. And they brought you to Hollywood? Uh, well, I was on the cover of Life magazine when uh, I got 14. 14 on the cover of Life. 
And the Disney people um, hired me to do Light in the Forest. Right. And I just finished a Broadway play, and I came out to do that. Uh, that was my first movie, and now I've done 45. Now, Brandon, I want to tell you something very touching. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon DeWilde. 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 I always say DeWilde. He was very... Uh, was he, he didn't like that, did he? No. Brandon DeWilde. Yes, Wonderful, DeWilde. wonderful actor, yes. and you guys were great together. Mm -hmm. What charisma on film that Carol Lindley and Brandon... Well, we were friends. Uh, we also lived near each other in New York, and we hung out, and uh, so we were, we were friends. And also, we were around the same age, and right. it was, uh, you know, where everybody else was very much older than us, and we had a lot in common. Sad that he had a... Very sad. Uh, he has a son, Jesse, uh -huh. who would be in his 30s now, and last you time... See him? No, I don't know where uh -huh. he is, but last uh -huh. time I saw Jesse uh -huh. was with Brandon, and Jesse was about four or five. He looked just like Brandon. It was amazing. You look wonderful. You did it. You had a talk show for a while in New York City. I had a talk show for ten years. Ten, cable. Ten years. Yes, I can interview you. Sometime. I know you can. I love you too. <laughs> we'll interview you. Yeah, yeah. Carol Lindley is always. Give me that microphone. <laughs> Carol Lindley, you're great. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Carol. Okay. It's always great. You seeing really you. hang on to pretty tight to that mic, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pat, we How are you? I haven't too. seen you for at Chris table right now. How are you, Pat? I'm, I'm going from fine. table to table, from Carol Lenley, Troy Donahue, oh. John Agar, and now Pat Chris. Well, I'm I'm glad to be in such wonderful company. You are, darling. My Thank God, look at this. Look at Pat here. Yeah. Look at Pat here. What have you been doing? These are the oh, monsters and all these... You know, these the interesting thing is the show has been on the air for 34 years. Every single day, somewhere in the United States. And, of course, when I do these shows, I have to remind little children, you know, who think it was filmed yesterday right and they expect to see you know 19 year old Marilyn right I have to you know remind them and they'll look at me and they'll say you Marilyn and I'll go yes I am and they'll say you don't look like her and I'll go well you know that was 34 years ago and we do age tell me how did you get that role how did Pat get that? Um, I tested for it did you really they there was the first Marilyn she was there for four months right and then she was leaving to get married and this was the last day of testing and, and they tested five girls and this was on a Wednesday right and and they called me up on Thursday to tell me I got the part. Friday, I signed the contract, and Monday, I started working. Well, and that's been, what, 30-some? Oh. Look at how many. It, 34 how years God, ago. You're still getting checks all the time, right? No, no. No, no. What you happened? See, I worked under all, I worked under the old union contract. Right. That's why I'm doing memorabilia shows. And we did not get any residuals. How naughty. How really naughty. You that's know, and there were a shame. lot of us. You yes. know, Batman and the Green Hornet yes. and, and yes. lots of us that, that just did not get residuals I'm which so sorry about that Pat, where are you from originally uh i'm from utah originally oh, really? i'm living now in in idaho Ooh, tell and me about I idaho. Just, oh it's wonderful well i live in the best part i live uh actually i live just out of a ski resort called sun valley right. which everybody's heard of i live in a little town called haley uh -huh. and bruce willis has made our town famous because right. he owns most that's of the right. town that's right and uh i love it you know there comes a time in life when Quality of life is more important than absolutely. quantity, and that's why I'm there. I'm looking at you right now. You look absolutely wonderful. Well, thank and you, you Skippy. Are a down earth lady. You have really uh, got your buttons together now. You know. Well, I hope so. It's taken me a long and time. It's a tough place to grow up. Oh, in. it is. Really, it tough. is. What has been the hardest for you? Um, well. Do you know, I think when I when I came on the scene, I was already married, and I had two children, and um, I really wasn't a part of the Hollywood scene. I didn't grow up in it, and so to me, you know, it was a job. Yeah. I went, I worked, I came home to my family. I word to Anne Blyton. I asked her the same question. What has Hollywood done to you? She said the same thing. She goes to church, her family, it's yeah. just a job. That's just exactly. And if you make it that way, it won't go any further. You know, you're absolutely absolutely right and I have wonderful memories wonderful Good. memories of the show and the people and are waiting to send your oh no and no thank you wonderful darling. thanks Skippy thank good you. to see you again thank you. Bye, bye bye yeah I'm not okay give me the butch. Uh, okay
Here I am sitting with Tommy Butch Bond. Hello, Tommy. How, How are you doing, you? Skip? God, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's wonderful to Your see you again. Your book is out. I just yeah, see it. Yeah. That book is doing. How is it doing? It did real well. I think they're going to go into a softback so they uh -huh. can sell it in more places, you know. Now, growing up here, this is you as a kid. Look at that, Tommy Butch. <laughs> working with the uh, gang, all the gang. Tell right. me about working with our gang. Well, I loved it. It was wonderful. And, you know, uh, the, the wonderful part about it is that I've been representing Cabin Fever Entertainment, you know, right. for the last four years. And we've been all over the country talking to just plain folks, families, uh -huh. and they love the Little Rascals. We played to four generations of them. You know how many, four generations, you're going yeah. back 40 years. And yeah. I want I must explain to you how many people in the globe have seen the Little Rascals? Oh. How many people have seen our gang comedy? How many people have seen these wonderful little men? You know, there's... Look at them all here. Yeah. Look. I mean, look at these kids. Here, look. There we are. Look at this. Look at Butch here. Butch is incredible. Working with this man right here, this young man. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. Wonderful guy. Little Buckwheat. How did he feel as a black man, work, a little black boy working with these white boys? Well, you know... Did he make any remarks about that? I asked him and I asked Stymie, I asked Sunshine Sammy, uh -huh. how did you guys like working in the Rascals? Did right. you like it? Right. They said, we loved every minute of it. Uh-huh. And this one right here, this lovely lady. Darla. Who's Darla. Who's, yes. Darla. She passed away in 1980. Yeah. Yeah. And this one right here? Uh, you know, I don't know who he you is. Don't? <laughs> don't? He looks like me. <laughs> I did like that. Well, I know yeah, you I did, yeah. At Monogram for... Uh, That's right. You were an actor. Yeah, I certainly was. <laughs> you were a kid, a kid actor. A kid actor like That's you. That's right. But not as famous as you. Well... Tell me about how did you become in show business and as uh, our gang and our... Uh, well, I was living in Dallas, Texas, right. and I was uh, five years old, and I was walking down the street with my mother and my grandmother, right. and this gentleman walked up, and he stopped us and said, uh, uh, is that your son? And my mother right. said, yeah. He said, well, you know, he's got a great face. He says, great nose. <laughs> he, says, he says, I'm a talent scout for Hollywood Studio. And he says, if you can bring him out to Hollywood, he says, I can't guarantee him a job, but I can guarantee him an interview with Mr. Roach. Right. And my mother said, well, we can't just drop everything. You know, my husband's got a job. Right. My grandmother said, there. she says, I'll take him. Was he tough to work for, Mr. Roach? Roach, he was wonderful. Was he? he traded he, the kids all? He never interfered with the directors. Uh -huh. He let the directors do their job. He never job. came on set? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just to play with the kids. Right, right. Uh -huh. And we'd visit with Laurel and Hardy. They'd uh -huh. visit with us. Laurel and Hardy. And you're, I'm sitting here with a man who's been with Laurel and Hardy, one of my favorite teams. Well, I've worked with them in Blockheads, right. too. You did? And yeah. Bonneville? Yeah. Yeah. But, what did you do in vaudeville? Uh, Sang, dance? Or? Yeah, a little something like that, but mainly it was movie work. Movie work. Uh, I worked with Thelma Todd and Patsy Kelly right. on the Roach Lot and Charlie Chase on the Roach Wonderful Lot. People. Oh, that's why they call it the Lot of Fun. What has been the, well, that seems like a big joy for you going back, but what has been the hardest for you as a child actor here in Hollywood growing up? Has it been hard things for you? What has been the hardest? No. You know, it was real easy for me. I don't know why. It was tough on some of the uh -huh. kids. Uh, some of the kids could not go through being an actor, a child star, and then making a transition into nobody. Right, right, right. It didn't bother me uh -huh. because I made the transition in 51, and I got into the production end of television. Right, right. So I stayed in the business. Now you're producing and doing things, and you're writing a book, and the book yes. is all about your life. Right. And it's doing extremely well. It's doing very well, and Cabin Fever is doing excellent. Uh -huh. I, we just made a new tape with Pete the dog. Uh-huh. There's Pete there. the dog. And that's the tape Look we at made. It. It'll be released in August, and it's just one uh -huh. tape, uh -huh. and it's called For Pete's Sake. And it's four episodes with just featuring Pete the dog. Uh -huh. And I narrated at the beginning with the new Pete. That's great. That's the you, one that was you, in the new you, movie. you make the rounds for children's schools at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. We, we play the kids because we want to influence the right, kids right. in something that's good and clean. Looking today... It's very difficult, looking clean and wholesome and clean. It's very difficult. It wasn't like that when you grew up. Not when you grew up either. No, it wasn't. It's it wasn't. Tough. It's tough, tough today. And but the kids love it. Uh, with, with television the way it is today, they don't show right, the rascals right, very much. Right. So the parents put their kids, young kids, three, four years old, in front of the set, pop one of these tapes in, right. and the kids are entranced. Here you're selling tapes, books, and everything. Yeah. 
do it. You have a lot of people, they want you to sign your books and yes, stuff. Yes, Thank yes. you so very much. Thank you, Skip. It's a pleasure seeing you Thank again. You. Thank you. Yeah, oh, that'll be fine. You Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, like Christmas, yeah. the album. Yeah, well, your, your CD is the only CD I can really prove on. Yeah. Thank you. Guess what? I'm sitting here with the, this lady. This lady is the lady in Hollywood right now. Young, personified. Tracy Lord, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Wow. I've been looking at you everywhere I go in Hollywood. You are just making... Can we look at this? Look at this table here at the Beverly Garland. <laughs> this is Tracy Lord, who is one of young Hollywood exciting ladies who turned over, turned around, and did something with her life. Turned around and really yeah, like studied, got an acting, I mean, really got serious. Thank you, Skip. You know, Joan Crawford started the way you started at the beginning of her career. Really? Yes, she did. And she, they burnt all those films. They tried, but they didn't. But you know something? I'm very proud of you because you really got serious and you went to acting classes. You really wanted to be an actress because you came out here, you wanted to be an actress. But, but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Some, but it's why to turn around. But you got yourself an agent. You got yourself a, a wonderful uh, roles in films. What, are you, do you want to be my new PR rep? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this Details magazine. Um, wow. Well, the Details, the cover, right. every, once a year they do the sex issue, and uh -huh. they, they choose, you know, uh, Drew Barrymore was on one, and right. I was on this one, and, and I was promoting my album, which is out right now, A Thousand Fires. Right. I'm working on my second one, so I did the cover of Details with the story inside, and that was actually the best-selling cover of Details magazine it ever. Was. Yes, I heard. Yes, that, that I heard. So I'm, I'm very flattered and pleased about that. Where is Tracy Lord from originally? Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, Steven Western girl. Dean Martin's hometown. Oh, really? And Chrissy Hine. Uh huh. Dean Martin's hometown is is in Ohio, but where in uh, Steubenville? Steubenville, right outside the, Cleveland. That's right, yeah, that's right. I worked it. I worked the American VFW or American Legion years ago. Really? Yeah, in the fifties. Really, I, I used to do club. Oh, you're too young for that. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, when you were back growing up in uh, Ohio, did you ever thought this would ever happen to you, or you always aimed for it? No, I mean, I, I I was like any other little girl. I didn't really know what I wanted to do school, or want to be. No, I mean, in high school, I, I didn't have really plans for that. I mean, I always wanted to be a model. I always wanted to work. I always... You went to New York, did you, from there? Um, I was in New York, and I was in I was in Hollywood, and... You came out here with your... Uh, what, how old my mom. With your I was mom. 12, yeah. You were 12. Yeah, so you, I'm basically a California you and Brooke girl. Shill. You and Brooke Shill. Yeah. You and Brooke Shill have a lot in common. I've never met her. Never met her, but you do have a lot in common. Really? Yeah, I have a feeling. Yeah, she was a model. Mm -hmm. Her mother, pushing, and she did a lot of baby models uh, in the bathtubs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you did the same thing, you know, really, basically. And uh, to be a sex goddess in Hollywood, <laughs> is it tough? You tell me. <laughs> You'll never drown, that's for sure. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's always been like this. <laughs> but you're very beautiful. Thank you. And if, is there a man in your life right now, Tracy? Yeah, same man. Same man? Yeah, John Enos, uh -huh. my fiance. He was on Melrose Place. He came on Melrose Place after I was on the show, and then we met. Um, actually through my uh, acting coach at a Christmas party. So about two years now. He was here earlier signing, but Shannon has since taken his place. <laughs> Melrose Place. Yeah. Interesting when you first arrived. I loved it. How did, how did the kids on the set? Great. Um, the best one out of all, I think, is Heather Lockyer, who I, you know, she's definitely had her ups and downs, and there was a period, I think, where people really didn't take her too seriously. She was the beautiful blonde, you know, girl that no one took seriously. And she is truly one of the most extraordinary women I've ever met in my life. She is so gracious and so sweet and so hardworking. And if I wanted to be like anyone, it would be hard. It would be like her. Yeah. Yeah. You and Drew Barrymore have a lot in common, too. I've heard that. Yeah, very much so. Nice talking to you. Nice You're talking a lovely to lady, and I wish you a lot in your career. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a nice show. Well, here I am with Steve Allen. Steve Allen, one of the greatest, well, television. If you say if, if The Tonight Show or any of these great shows on television, talk shows, this is where it originated. This is the man who originated the TV show. Let the record show reflect. That's right. So let's talk about Steve Allen. You have these books. This is all your life here. This is what you've experienced in life, tasted in life. Steve, has it been tough? No. 
Uh, there have been tough moments in life, but they have nothing to do with writing books or jokes or acting or doing right. comedy concerts. That's all the fun part. But living, living, going back, let's going back to your career. First started in from New York originally? Well, in the sense that I was born there. My mother and father were a vaudeville comedy team. Her name was Belle Montrose. In fact, one of the collectors that was here yesterday uh, came up and gave me something uh, very generously that is quite precious to me. It was a little article from Variety, the trade publication, as you know, in 1921 or some year, year like that, uh, about my mother. And uh, anyway, that's how I got into the business. I was born in it. We don't know that. But Judy Garland was born in the Trump Steve it was, Allen, really. It was pretty much that way. Yeah, I was born in New York, although uh, kids of vaudevillians had a kind of a tough problem once they reached school age, five or six, because the law says you have to go to school. But to go to school, you have to live in one town. And the vaudevillians didn't live in one town. They were in a different town every week or so. Consequently, I didn't see my mother that much uh, during the important years. So, uh, but nevertheless, I was able to live in Chicago with members of her family for the most part and go to uh, what turned out to be a total of 18 schools in all. In Chicago. If mostly in Chicago. I'm, yeah. I'm from Rockford, Illinois, originally. Ah. Chicago grew up there. Yes. And I knew Chicago very well. It's a great city to grow up. Still is, yes. And it's a great show town, too. The Oriental <laughs> Theater, the Chicago Theater. The yes. Great theaters. You worked them. A lot of history there, right. Tell me about the Oriental Theater. Did you work that, too? Uh, I went down there one night, and there were no Orientals, so I never went there again. It was a very disappointing experience. Comedy. You do a lot of comedy writing. I just did it, right in front of you. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> a lot of comedy writing, Steve Allen. Yeah. Well, some of my books are funny. There's a book called How to Be Funny, and it's funny. Right. There's another book called Make Them Laugh, and it's uh, in right. the funny category. And in you fact... You a cooking book, too, don't you? Uh, no, book, no, but I can have one for oh. you by Tuesday if oh, you need. Okay. This is just one of my series of murder mysteries. This is called Murder in Murder Vegas. Vegas. And there's a new one coming up. Well, here's Miss America. How oh, are you? I'm fine, it's darling. How are you? Merriweather. Yes. So what's left of her? <laughs> How are you? What do you mean left of her? Why well, are you I'm, that here? I'm <clears throat> I'm suffering through jet lag. I'm I'm living in New York now. Oh, that's my favorite place. I wanna and go I wanna go to New York, Mr. Blackwell. I heard from Grace Robbins and she is having a good time in New York City. This is Mr. Blackwell. Oh, um, Love you. And this is the man who She's gorgeous. This is the man who tells everybody what to wear, what shouldn't wear, and uh, yes or no, what's uh, what's in. No, oh, I'm not that evil. You are. No, I don't well, go around. Well, you're pretty good today. Everyone. Look at you. No, I love my pants. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yes. Okay. This is history. The pants. The pants. Okay. Signed by everybody. That wonderful. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I know these are going to be auctioned off at a share boomtown affair. Uh huh. There's great signatures on here and wonderful autographs. Great idea. I'm flattered to be on with someone so pretty. <laughs> oh, this is a pretty lady, nice? and the year was what year was Miss uh, America? Oh dear. That's a long time ago. A Let's long share. Long We're having a good. There's a lovely lady over there. Her name is Paige, no. and oh, she yes, is. I know she's, her. She's, yes, she's she's she speaks right up, darling. Uh, 1955 uh, was my but, year. Hey, that was my favorite year. 19. <laughs> what was your favorite? 1955. What was your My favorite, favorite year? year was 1944. 44? I was on uh, Broadway with Mae West, oh. with Gene Barry. No, were yes. You really? A whole year oh. of hell. Oh, how It was a year of hell. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> Being with May. Was it really? Okay. Oh, it was hell. Which which play? What play did you do? I I played every part from the monk to the hairdresser to the dressmaker <laughs> to a guard to a what play was <laughs> to, it? To, uh, Stan Catherine was great. Oh, Catherine, uh, Catherine the great. great. You were in that? Yes. And oh, how oh. old were you then? You were a very oh, young I, boy. No, no, I was Maybe. attractively young. Well, you came to Hollywood when you were very <laughs> young anyway. You sure. Did a, you did a lot of children films, Wait kid films. If the camera will go up. Yeah. On top. Oh, go ahead. Yes, that, what is that is me as one of the dead-end kids. Dead-end kids. That's Little right. tough guys. No. That's, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. yes.